whatever looks like a case that the enemy has been using against you that case is sorted now before this day is over it is evident that your captivity is torn God has commissioned Bishop David Oyedepo to preach the word of faith, liberating men everywhere from all oppressions of the devil. Get set for an empowerment that will enable you to rule in the midst of your enemies and subdue them under your feet. Now, Bishop David Oyedepo. Shall we all lift up our hands to heaven and let's worship this great King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It is your season of encounter with power and through the greatness of his power all his enemies will submit themselves. Whatever has been resisted In God's plan and purpose for you for the year, the hour of release has finally come. Yeah. From the depth of your heart, pray the prayer that must be answered. Pray the prayer that must be answered. It has to come from your heart to reach out to heaven. It has to come from your heart to reach out to heaven. Somebody is speaking to the Lord intensely. You are free to pray in the spirit and pray with understanding. Thank you, Father. The root of the glory of the paradise of Zion, the tattoos of the ribayanka, pradi and the tozia, the ketre cigara by the cotane, ambla katasuzi, the rianda paretas, the kosi garita bragita no tarubali, the shishi araba la koria, dakte ne poria le proti, maketu ale tengla raba ya cotane. Take it, it's yours. Thank you, Father. Begin to give God thanks right now. Every issue raised by you this morning has ascended to heaven and the testimony must come. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. I decree instant answers to all of your prayers. In the name of Jesus Christ, so shall it be. Now, in one moment, just speak to the Lord. Lord, I need an encounter with your power this morning via your word. Give me an encounter with your power via your word this morning. Give me an encounter with your power via your word this morning. Give me an encounter with your power via your word this morning. Give me an encounter with your power via your word this morning. Give me an encounter with your power via your word this morning. Give me an encounter with your power via your word this morning. Give me an encounter with your power via your word this morning. In Jesus' 
precious name we are praying. Yeah. It is done. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. I'm pleased you may be seated. Say with me, this is my season of encounter with power. I shall not miss my portion. My heart is set. I must encounter the raw power of God this morning. I must encounter the raw power of God this month. So help me God. Our series of teaching for the month in our Sunday services is captioned, Engaging the Power of the Holy Ghost for Fulfillment of Prophecy. And last Sunday we tried to look at the first segment of it, Empowerment for Fulfillment of Destiny. And today we'll be looking at another segment which is very crucial and very vital. And it's empowerment for sanctification. Under the umbrella subject of empowerment by the Holy Ghost for fulfillment of prophecy. That simply implies empowerment for sanctification, for fulfillment of prophecy. That establishes the fact that sanctification is a vital factor for fulfillment of prophecy. We recognize that the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost is the spirit of holiness. Remember there is one God, there is one faith, there is one spirit, there is one baptism. And in Romans chapter 1 verse 4, the Holy Ghost was presented as the spirit of holiness. Romans 1 4, that was the spirit at work in Christ that empowered him for dominion over sin. He was declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness. So his sonship was established by the spirit of holiness. Can I hear your amen? The Holy Ghost is the spirit of holiness is the refiner's fire that purifies the sons of Levi so we can offer unto God offerings in righteousness. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 3 to 5. Is the refiner's fire that purifies the saints of God so we can offer unto God offerings in righteousness. Then shall our offering be acceptable as in former times and will be commanding the same order of results. If you check that scripture, Is the message of the covenant that suddenly came into his temple. And you know in the day of Pentecost, suddenly, the covenant, the message of the covenant came. So that's the Holy Ghost. And it came as cloven tongues of fire and sat upon each and every one of them. And he calls him in that chapter, chapter 3 of Malachi, the refiner's fire. So we need the Holy Ghost 
to live a sanctified life. Gold is precious, but until it passes through the furnace, it holds no value. Every one of us holds or carries a very enviable destiny, but must be processed through the refinery of the Holy Ghost for our real values to come up. Today, I see that fire landing upon everyone's head yeah. and changing everyone's story supernaturally. Yeah. And that looks like you. Let me hear your loudest amen. Iniquity is a mystery, but godliness is a great mystery. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7. The mystery of iniquity doth already work. First Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. But great is the mystery of godliness. Great is the mystery of godliness. So we have the mystery of iniquity that can only be swallowed up by the mystery of godliness. Just like in the case of the Aaron's rod swallowing up the rod of the magicians. There is the mystery of iniquity. There is the great mystery of godliness. The mystery of godliness lies in the ministry of the Holy Ghost. For if we live after the flesh, we will die. There is no personal effort that can set a man free. But if we through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the flesh, we shall live. Romans 8 and verse 13. So the Holy Ghost is the great mystery behind godliness. Ezekiel, I mean, Ezekiel, I saw a great vision of a golden seven golden candlesticks with bows upon them, all of gold. And he said, tell Zerubbabel, this is not possible by power, nor by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord God of hosts. It's impossible to live a sanctified life without the ministry of the sanctifier, the Holy Ghost. Can I hear your amen? Is the, ref the refiner's fire. There is no other way for God to come forward with his real values without passing through the refiner's fire. Therefore, today and in this service and at this time, God is giving you an encounter with the spirit of holiness. Yeah. Somebody believe that. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Yeah. I said, God is giving every one of us here a fresh encounter with the spirit of holiness. Yeah. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and um, Verse 9 to 11. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God, be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves of mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. But sought were some of you, but ye, were, ye are sanctified. Ye are justified and in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirit of our God, capital letter S, talking about the Holy Ghost, such were, but ye are now washed by the blood, ye are sanctified in the name of our Lord and by the spirit of our God. So it's impossible except we engage the ministry of the Holy Ghost for a triumphant life. 
This is so important. Why do we need sanctification? One, it's a requirement for answered prayers. For if I hide iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Psalm 66, verse 18. Why do we need sanctification? Access to revelations. For the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Psalm 25, verse 14. Joseph had access to the secrets of God. In as much as God has shown you all this, uh, you are in another class. But he said, but I fear God. So access to revelation requires sanctification. Otherwise, you'll be limited to information, which any jack and hardy can have. Revelation is buying into the heart of God on the issues of the hour. Daniel purposed in his heart not to defy himself with the king's rich food. And he was a man of unusual depths. Wisdom and light and understanding that the wisdom of the gods was in him. So we need sanctification to flow in revelation. We need sanctification to assess divine secrets. Why do we need sanctification? Because if you don't know why you need something, you may never be committed to it. Why do I need sanctification? We need sanctification for new levels of anointing. Thou loveth righteousness and hated wickedness, therefore God, thy God, has also highly exalted thee, anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Psalm 45 and verse 7. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. Verse 6. The sceptre of thy kingdom is a right sceptre. Thou loveth righteousness. Verse 7. And hated wickedness. Therefore, God, thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Luke chapter 5 and verse 39. He said, But... No one having drunk new wine said we divide, desire the new because he said the old is better. He said, but new wine must be put into new wine skin and then both are preserved. There is a demand for new wine skin. New wine must be put into new wine skin. So fresh oil will require new life. Transform life, you know. He said, Turn ye at my reproof, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 23, and I will pour my spirit upon you, and I will make my words known unto you. Turn. It's not your turn for fresh oil until you turn. Turn ye at my corrections, turn ye at my reproofs, and I will pour my spirit upon you and I will make my words known unto you. Why do we need sanctification? Say with me, security of destiny. Come on, let me hear you say that. Security of destiny. Many great destinies in scriptures crashed for lack of sanctification. Many great destinies in scriptures crashed for lack of sanctification. Think of Achan. Achan. He saw a wedge of gold. He coveted it. He took it into his tent and dug the ground and kept it there. 
and that ended that destiny himself, his entire family. They were stoned with stones unto death. Joshua 7, 19 to 25. And heaps of stone upon them just by the love of money. The instruction was clear, don't take nothing from that place. I'm the one that has given you the victory. Don't arrogate it to yourself. And then he coveted it. So covetousness landed him in a crash. You will not crash. Yeah. You know, people will do anything to get money. And many have landed in miserable conditions, irrecoverable conditions, because of an insatiable crave for money. Money by all means. We saw another great destiny here by name Gehazi. Gehazi was the heir apparent of the prophetic office of Elijah. But he was a money craver. When Naaman brought in gifts to Elijah, genuine prophets don't celebrate gifts. They don't celebrate receiving of gifts. It's only quacks who does. Quacks. He said, my master has speared this Syrian. This is a business opportunity. How can you let him go? I will run after him. And the devil anointed him. Because he ran and caught up with us. Us and chariots, a man. He was anointed by the devil. And collected those things. And collected leprosy alone. That was the end of Gehazi who should have been twice what Elijah was. That destiny crashed by the love of money. It ended there. It is the blessings of the Lord that make it rich and he has no sorrow with it. I've had amazing Gifts that the Lord told me to return, including houses. And there is not anybody ever gave me then that I can't give out now. Somebody sold the seed of a car to me in 1996, and the Lord said, Return it. And I did a letter and asked for, Do you know the address of this person? You need to return this. No genuine prophet crave after gifts. It's quacks that do. Prophets are ordained to service the needs of mankind. Glory to God. So when you hear somebody say, I've not seen you for some time, and he says he's a prophet, no? He's a merchant. He's a merchant. I don't want to see anybody in this church forever, from the beginning for anything. The ministry of Gehazi crashed in quest of money. Your own will not crash. Amen. Your own will not crash. Amen. Your own will not crash. Amen. Your own must not crash. You remember the story of Judas, one of the twelve. For thirty pieces of silver, he sold the master. Matthew 26, 14 to 16. And when he saw that his master was condemned, he took the money and cast it down at the feet of the high priest in the temple. Matthew 27 verse 3 to 5, and he went and hung himself. Apostolic destiny crashed for 30 pieces of silver. 
Anything that is not yours you, that you corner to yourself is an accursed thing. Whether from a business partner or from a customer. Anything you appropriated to yourself unjustly is an accursed thing. My prayer is that no accursed thing will enter your treasure. Why do we need sanctification? For security of destiny. The love of money, number two, the loss of the flesh. Samson crashed with all his might. Judges 16, verse 1 to 2. He found an harlot and went after her. Not me was going after his own life. Judges 16, 1 to 2, 16 to 21, 30 to 31, the great man crashed to the lust of the flesh. Solomon the Great loved the Lord so much. God loved him so much. But in 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 1, and Solomon loved many strange women. And they turned his heart away from the Lord. All the way to verse 3. They turned his heart away from the Lord. And Solomon ended his journey an idolater. He was worshipping idols in the shrines. Your destiny will not crash. Yeah. And then, of course, pride. We saw the great destiny of Ahithophel crashed to pride because his cancer was rejected. He went and hanged himself. Destiny crashed. First, Second Samuel chapter 17 and verse 23. Ahitophel, the wisest man whose cancer was as an oracle of God, crashed by pride. And when Ahitophel saw that his cancer was not followed, he saddled his ass and arose and got himself home to his house, to his city, and put his household in order and hanged himself. Aya. Then, that's after that time his cancer will be taken, isn't it? Pride. He could not stand his opinion being rejected, not being taken. He couldn't stand it. He thought it was that wisdom. No. It was only a vessel through which God was pushing out wisdom. You see, there are people today whose destinies are just truncated by pride. Pride looks down on cell minister, looks down on zona minister, look down on pastors, look down on colleagues, look down on bosses. There are those who look down on their bosses. Pride. And you don't have to be high up to be proud. Many, many low down people are proud. I was where they gave a beggar money. And he said, me? Beggar. At the airport. I don't take this kind of form. Beggar. So you, pride is a silent killer. You can't fulfill destiny with pride. You can't. A man made an oration by name Herod. And he said, the voice of a God and of man. And he crashed. He made that oration to compete with God. That, how wise is God? Let me show you my wisdom now. And he crashed. This great kingdom which my hand has built, Nebuchadnezzar said, and he became an animal. You can't fulfill destiny with pride. Today, there's an encounter with the raw power of God Amen. that will destroy the lust of the flesh, Amen. the lust of the eyes, Amen. and the pride of life. Amen. And that will open up your destiny to a colorful fulfillment. Amen. Nobody here will miss his place in destiny. Amen. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Amen. It is normally pride that engenders rebellion. And rebellion is as sane as witchcraft. How many understand what I'm talking about? 
Rebellion is viewed by God as witchcraft. <laughs> to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as sin as witchcraft. And you remember, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. So when you are in pride, you are likely going to get into rebellion. When you get to rebellion, you are dead. You know, there are many people who are working on the sea, but they are dead. For she that liveth in worldly pleasure is dead. Why yet she liveth? First Timothy 5, 8. So you can be dead on the street. <laughs> Walking corpses. Walking corpses. Walking corpses. My prayer is that somebody here is breaking loose from all this defilement today in the name of Jesus. If you are that person, let me hear your loudest amen. amen. These shackles are breaking off the feet of everyone here today. Amen. That looks like you. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. For it shall come to pass in that day that the burden shall be taken from off your shoulder and the yoke from off your neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. That's happening for someone right here. Yeah. Why do we need sanctification? Say with me, security of posterity. One more time. Sanctification can preserve your generations yet unborn. We saw a man in Psalm 112, and verse 1 to 3, blessed is the man that feared the Lord that great lies himself in his commandment. His seed also shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house because his righteousness will endure forever. So generations are preserved with sanctification. Proverbs 20 and verse 7. A just man walketh in his integrity, and his children are blessed after him. So sanctification preserves our generations yet unborn. God will always remember Abraham and show favor to Israel. For Abraham believed God and took unto him for righteousness. He was the friend of God. Amen. Amen. And God has been true to his friend for thousands of years. That will be the story of every winner. Amen. That will be the story of every winner. Amen. Your generations after you will be drawing from the fountains of your work with God. Amen. For the just man walketh is in his, in his integrity, and his children are blessed after him. His children are blessed after him. Come and say, that's me. That's Let me hear your, you say it loud. Your children must be blessed after you. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Quickly, how does the Holy Ghost sanctify us? What are the channels of the sanctification ministry of the Holy Ghost? One, by direct impartation of the spirit of holiness. By the impartation of the spirit of holiness. And what qualifies us for impartation is a desperation for an encounter with the spirit of holiness. A desperation, a thirst, and a longing. I cannot help myself. Spirit of God, I need you. I am helpless without you. For the body without the spirit is dead. 
I need you badly. I need you now. You don't have to play financial games to become a giant in business. Job never did. And he became the greatest of all men in the East. He was a man, a perfect man, one that feared God and hated evil. And he became the greatest of all men in the East. He wasn't living for money. He was living for God and making great money and blessing humanity. The greatest men and women in this generation, I know, God spoke to me, an army of them will rise from our platform. Amen. Men that live in their own class, that is, you are not comparing them with anybody, they just live in their own class. They are just in their own class. And they will be there not by crook means. They'll be there by righteous means. Yes. They'll be men whose authority and dominion will be deeply rooted in righteousness. Amen. Many are here this morning. Amen. I said, many are here this morning. Yeah. Multitudes are here this morning. Yeah. And Job became the greatest of all men in the East. And you saw the vow of sanctification that Job made in chapter 31 of Job. Great vow. Sanctification vows that gave him his place in destiny. You won't miss your place. You shall not miss your place. You shall not miss your place. Impartation of the spirit of holiness, a quest, an insatiable quest for it. Ezekiel 36 and verse 27. He said, I'll put my spirit within you. It will cause you to walk in my ways. Walk in my status. And you shall keep my judgment and do them. I will put my spirit within you. So you, we need inner empowerment to live a sanctified life. And that empowerment comes by the Holy Ghost. Direct impartation. Direct impartation. And these impartations come through apostolic and prophetic ministries, among others. For I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gifts to the end that it may be established. Romans 1 11. To the end that it may be established. I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gifts. To the end that it may be established. Therefore, this morning, receive ye the spirit of holiness. Yeah. Receive ye this morning the spirit of sanctification. Yeah. Whatever has been posing a challenge to you, either to in your walk with God, today becomes a testimony. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. The channels through which the Holy Ghost sanctifies us. Number two, by the revelation of the truth. Come and say revelation. Say it loud, revelation. Sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. Sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. John 17, 17. In Psalm 19, number 6 to 7, we have, he said, verse 7, please. He said, um, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. And verse 8, he says, the status of the Lord are right, rejoice in the heart. The commandments of the Lord are pure, enlightening the eyes. Verse 9. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. 
in Psalm 119, verse 9 to 11. We are initially a young man cleanses. Cleanse his way. It is by taking heed unto thy word. Say thy word have I hid in my heart that may not sin against you. It's so important for us to know revelation empowers for sanctification. And the Holy Ghost is the one that enhances our access to revelation. That means he enhances our access to sanctification. Glory to God. Glory to God. Please understand this. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And as many as received the word, what happens? He gave power to become the sons of God. He gave power, verse 12, to become the sons of God. John 1, 1 to 5, and then verse 12. As many as received the word, he empowers to become the sons of God. To manifest as sons of God. To be declared the sons of God with power. That means in the world lies the spirit of holiness. And when you cut the revelation of the world, the powers of darkness are disarmed. Hallelujah. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. That looks like you. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. So the Holy Ghost sanctifies us by access to the revelation of the truth. And then finally, through the spirit of prayer and supplication, through the spirit of prayer and supplication, watch and pray lest ye fall into temptation. Watch and pray lest ye fall into temptation. And the spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, is the spirit of prayer and supplication. He empowers us to stand strong in the place of prayer. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought to, but the Spirit himself helpeth our weakness in prayers. He helps our weakness in, weaknesses in prayers. He empowers us to live above weakness in prayers. Romans 8, 26 and 27. He empowers us to pray according to the will of God. Jesus said to them, I know your spirit is willing, but your flesh is weak. Matthew 26, verse 41 to 44. Now you see, so it's not enough to be willing to pray. We need to be empowered 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 to pray. As the cry calls it, the spirit of prayer and supplication. Ah, the spirit of grace and supplication. The spirit of grace and supplication is the ministry of the Holy Ghost. He empowers men to stand strong in the place of prayer, which wards off all temptations on our part. Jesus prayed and he was transfigured. So we stand on the altar of prayer to be in fire. And when the fire, whoo, 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 every demon stays clear. There is one thing no demon can despise. It is fire. What do I call it? Fire. That's why no madman needs to be told this is fire. As he gets near fire, demon said, I also know fire. You better stay clear. I know fire. No madman needed any help to stay on fire. He stays off on his own. He stays off on his own. All the white beasts in the forest, when they see fire, everybody stays off. In Boy Scout camping, the reason we keep the bonfire high is to keep the wildlife away. And when, the, as the fire burns slow, they keep coming in and closer and closer and closer. They say, nonsense, there is fresh food, food here. Yeah. They pass on the people. So you keep the, whether you are hot or cold, it doesn't matter. You, the bonfire must be on to keep the wildlife away. To keep the wildlife away. And we have fire our life on the altar of prayers. One evangelist years ago came for a crusade and stayed in our place. And I ran into him in the corridor. I went back. His eyes. He's been in the room since morning. 
He was going out for the evening crusade. When he came out and I met him in the lobby. Fire. His jaw is turning from the altar of fire. It is one of the ways the Holy Ghost sanctifies us. He empowers us to stand strong on the prayer altar so we can pray life transfigurating prayer. Life transforming prayer. Life empowering prayer. So by impartation, by revelation, and by the spirit of grace and supplication, the Holy Ghost empowers us to live a sanctified life. This is your day. Yeah. Somebody believe that. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Yeah. This is your day. Yeah. This is your day. Yeah. Finally, we need sanctification to secure eternity. Come and say eternity. And if we miss that out in our Christian journey, then we are most of all men miserable. Eternity is God's crowning agenda for redemption. If we miss heaven at the end of the day, we are counted among the most miserable people on the earth. Heaven is the joyful homecoming of the redeemed. It's important to be heaven targeted. You must see heaven as your home of return. That's where we live forever. We live here only for a while. There we live forever in splendor, inexplainable, comfort incomparable. Looking unto Jesus directly. Fellowshipping with the spirit of just men made perfect. You can't afford to miss that. Spirit of holiness come on me this morning. Hallelujah. There where you are seated, just crave for him. Crave for him. I mustn't miss you, Jesus. I mustn't miss the end of this journey. I mustn't miss it for anything. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. The communion is one of the platforms of empowerment for the church. Among other things, we are empowered to live like Christ through the communion table. Therefore, whatever is not like Christ in anyone's life must give way today. Yeah. He knew no sin. So by the power of the mystery of the communion, the battle in your life against sin is declared one. Yeah. Every deadly, deadly habit is flushed out of every life today by the power of the blood. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Holy Ghost, give me an encounter with the raw power of the communion table right now. Pray. Give me an encounter with the raw power of God through this communion table today. Let the power of the blood find full expression in my life. Whatever habit to hate, now, by the power of the blood, I overcome. I overcome, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. I overcome you by the blood of the Lamb. Today is my day of liberty. Hallelujah. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. From this table, every disease, every sickness, every oppression of the devil is flushed out in Jesus' name. 
so shall it be. Please get seated and with faith partake of the table of the Lord. Go to this table violently praying, taking the liberty of what belongs to you. Return from the table prophesying over your life on the dawning of a new day. Go ahead. Thank you, Jesus. Take it with faith, expectant, pregnant with expectation. This is your hour. I'd like you to just commit yourself to praying right now. Commit yourself to praying and speaking to the Lord right now. Don't go to this table carelessly. Holy Ghost, I am positioned for a new life, a new beginning. I'm positioned for a transfigured life, a transformed life. I'm set to secure destiny. I must fulfill destiny. My destiny must not crash. My destiny must not crash. Somebody is praying right now. Pray from the depth of your heart. Pray from the depth of your heart. This is your chance for a change of story. This is your chance for a change of story. This is your chance for a change of story. This is your chance for a change of story. Somebody is praying from the depth of his or her heart. This is one moment you will live to remember in your life. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. It is your turn to secure destiny. It's your turn to secure prosperity. It's your turn to secure eternity. Enough is enough. Somebody's praying. Somebody's praying from the depth of his or her heart. Somebody's praying from his, the depth of his or her heart. Destinies are opening up right now. Destinies are opening up right now. Pray your way into fulfillment of destiny. Pray your way into empowerment for sanctification. Pray your way into empowerment by the blood of the Lamb. Pray your way into a new beginning. Pray your way into a new dawn. Somebody's praying. Pray that prayer. Pray from the depth of your heart. Take it praying. Go back to your seat prophesying. It's the dawn of a new day. Destiny is secure today. Destiny is recovered today. Destiny is recovered today. Destiny is recovered today. Whatever you may have lost to sin is recovered by the power of the Holy Ghost. Is recovered by the power of sanctification. Is recovered in the name of Jesus. Somebody is taking it back. Take 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 it back. Everybody's praying. Take it back. I'm taking it back. I'm taking it back. I'm taking it back. I am taking it back. I'm taking back whatever the enemy has stolen from me. I'm turning back to God and it's restoring back to me everything I may have lost. Give me an encounter with your raw power right now. Holy Ghost, give me an encounter with your raw power. Give me an encounter with your raw power. Give me an encounter with your raw power. Enough is enough. Anything you drop today will never come on you again. Whatever the Lord does, it shall be forever. Now take your healing. Take your deliverance. Take your healing. Take your deliverance. Now take your healing. Take your deliverance. Now take your healing. Take your deliverance. Now take your healing. Take your deliverance. He said, Their sins shall be forgiven, and I will heal them. Now take your healing. Take your deliverance. Somebody's taking it right now. Take your healing. Take your deliverance. Take your healing. Take your deliverance. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. It's your moment of change. Take it, it's your moment of change. Take it, it's your moment of change. Whosoever drinketh my blood and eateth my flesh, he shall live like me. Jesus, I want to live like you. I want to live like you spiritually. I want to live like you soulically. I want to live like you physically. Whatever is not like you in my body must not survive must not survive the dagger of the blood, the platform of my double restoration. I take it, I receive it right now. Somebody's taking it. This is your turn. That disease is departing from you. That evil spirit is going out of you right now. Every spirit of defilement is cast out of your life. You're living a brand new life, a new dawn, a new beginning. The words of your mouth, the message of your heart is being acceptable to God right now. Come on, take it. 
Take it. Take it. Holy Ghost. Impart me with the spirit of holiness this hour. Somebody's praying that prayer. Pray from the depth of your heart. It's your turn for a change of story. 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 It is your turn for a change of story. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Son of God. Now begin to give thanks to God because he has had you. Your healing is there. Your deliverance is there. Your restoration is there. Your sanctification has finally landed. The spirit of holiness has finally come on you. Oh, the fire that refined has come on you. Come on, the refiner's fire is burning in your heart. Hallelujah. Everybody stand to your feet, lift up your two hands and celebrate God. In Jesus' precious name, we have received. How many here have received today the impartation of the spirit of holiness? How many believe they have been delivered? How many believe a new day has finally come? How many have received the life of Christ through the communion table today. So whatever cannot be found in Christ shall no longer be found in you. In the name of Jesus. He knew no sin. Therefore from today, the dominion of sin over anyone's life is caused in the name of Jesus. He knew no sickness. The harassment of sickness and disease on anyone's life comes to an end today. He was sound upstairs. Every form of mental blockade, every form of loss of memory that people may have suffered either at all, it's over today in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Come and give the Lord a big hand of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Please listen to this very vital information. We have a special program at the Zona Fellowship level, which is Tagged Fanny the Reviver Fire. It's coming up this Friday night, and the time is 6 to 8 p.m. I'd like everyone in this church to be a part of it because it's designed for addressing the meeting of the needs of members and all new converts. Endeavor to be there by all means and get all your converts on there. I'm sure you'll be glad that to date we have over 50,000 people that have gone through Believers Foundation class. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a big hand. <laughs> Amen. There is no ordinary program in this church, so endeavor to be there. But by the signal of the Holy Ghost, we're going to be having what the Holy Ghost called to me, by all means, outreach. Hallelujah. Come and say, by all means. By all means. First Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 22. So the weak, I became weak. That by all means, by all means, I may save some of them. Someone came in here today and said, this is the madman on the street. Madman on the street. Climbing the altar under two months. Madman on the street. And speaking to this audience. Madman on the street. Brought him by all means. By all means. Somebody stooped down and picked him up. Oh, 
and see him standing there. What if he turns a millionaire tomorrow? Yes. Who knows? By all means. He restored his dignity by all means. He never could imagine he would be in the midst of people like this. Now he's addressing the people. He's on the internet. Around the world. By all means. So we are stooping down by all means. And that is very important. It's coming up on the 19th. And we are all going to be there to by all means reach out to the people. And please don't make light of it. Endeavor to be there. It's a by all means operation. And we are going to return by all means. Amen. <laughs> With testimonies. Amen. God is not looking for the great. No. He's not looking for the lowly that he will make great. God is not looking for the rich. He's looking for the poor that he will make rich. God is not looking for the high and mighty. He's looking for the ones that don't have identity. So can give them identity. Thank God for the rich. We extend his love to them. Thank God for the high and lofty. We extend his love to them. But Jesus came to reach out to his down through them. Where I was before he picked me. Where most of us were before he picked us. Let's be part of rescuing these lives of people on our street who don't know love and have never experienced it. Let's reach out to them and bring them in. It's a by all means outreach and it's 7 o'clock in the morning and then uh, it's going to be a great time in Jesus' name. Is somebody blessed? Give Jesus a big, big hand of praise. <laughs> by all means, I must say by all means. Read that scripture and then we share the goodness. First Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 22. By all means, to the weak, I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I made all things to all men, that I might by all means. It's a by all means outreach, by all means anointing upon every winner. Stooping down to raise up the down trodden. By all means anointing. By all means anointing. By all means anointing. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Go in peace. Continue to flow in the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. You are going to be empowered by revelation that will put you on top of circumstances. Can I hear your amen? Yeah. Don't forget. Lift up your two hands. Go in peace. Yeah. Return with your testimonies. Yeah. In Jesus' name. David Oyedepo has just placed in your hands the key to all-round victory, exploits, success, and unquestionable dominion over all life's challenges. The end has come to all your struggles in Jesus' name. Please share your testimony with us. Write Bishop David Oyedepo, 21688 Ikeja, Lagos, Nigeria. Call 774-7546, 774-7547, 774-7548. And best of all, come hear the man of God live as you worship with us at Faith Tabernacle, Canaan Land, Kilometer 10, Idiroko Road, Otta. 